Hey y'all, welcome to my butterfly garden. I've got some cool projects going on and the first thing is shaping and trimming shrubby trees. Wait, do you see how I'm getting them to form the shape? It's like they're giant bonsai. I'm using 18 gauge aluminum craft wire and um, I'll link this in my Amazon links. Thank you. Thank you all so much for using my Amazon links. They're always in the description section under the video. Anyway, so I take it and I make a hook on one end. And I am working on my sweet almonds. So you see how all those pieces are sticking straight up? Well, instead of just trimming them, what I want to do is get them to bend and sweep over. So I'm taking my hook and I'm hooking onto a branch, like I'm pull it toward me. <laughs> then I'm taking the hook and, and attaching it to one of the end portions of the branch and then I'm bringing it down to one of the lower branches. Let me find a good one here. And I'm going to twist it on and then leave them connected. You can see they're connected right there. And then that will force that branch to bend and then it will naturally stay in that shape eventually. Not, it doesn't take long. And I will be able to then release the wire and it will just stay pulled over like this, which will give the shape that I want for my sweet almond without all those tall sticky up pieces. And as you can see, it's raining, so I'm gonna go in. Hey y'all, we're taking a quick pause on the shaping of the sweet almond because we had a thunderstorm roll through, so I had to go inside. And um, so then I turned on YouTube on my TV and you know, thought, well, I'll just catch up on some of my favorite uh, YouTube people. And the first one that came up was from the Florida Wildflower, is it Association? Florida Wildflower. It's Florida Wildflower Association Foundation, one of those fancy end words. And it was all about native milkweed, which, oh my gosh, I was so excited because I've been, been looking for something like this. So they went through and talked about all 21 of the native milkweeds. And then she spoke a bit about tropical milkweed. Mm -hmm. So I have an update for you and I'm just sharing what I learned from this webinar that was saved um, on YouTube. So I'll link the, vi the video, it's an hour and a half long, but I'll link the video below in my description if you want to go watch the whole thing because it is quite fascinating. They do show you all 21 of the native Florida milkweeds. And they'll also show you um, if they're native in other locations because a lot of them are native all over the United States. So if you're not in Florida and you watch my channel, you could still find this interesting. And it also talks about um, the Florida ecotype and how when there's a division of space kind of between northern and southern, um, southern varieties of the same plant but they're not like spread in between you know like there's a gap then the northern varieties usually are a totally different ecotype than the southern varieties which I just I just love learning more about this stuff so let me get to let me get to the tropical milkweed because that's what you want to hear about I had to turn and switch hands because this arm was getting tired of holding up the camera okay the monarchs in Central and South Florida are here by 
mistake, they're referred to as strays, but there's a large population of them. They do not fly over the Gulf of Mexico. Um, there are some studies that maybe some of them are flying over to Cuba to go south. But once they're down deep into Florida, they're not going to turn north and then go over the panhandle and then back south to go to Mexico. So there's basically a population that is here all year. So the question is, if the native Florida milkweeds die back like a swamp milkweed does, there's only one native milkweed that does not um, go into a state of dormancy. And that is Asclepius perennis, which is the aquatic milkweed. Now, if you've seen aquatic milkweed, it has tiny <laughs> leaves and it could not sustain a large population of monarch butterflies. So what apparently has happened is way back before tropical milkweed, there was probably enough perennis to sustain the small population of monarchs that were in central to south florida but because of the influx of tropical milkweed the population has grown and so now it's kind of stuck here and um living off of the tropical milkweed here but which is why um how do I how do I say this because the tropical milkweed doesn't die back and it's the same population of butterflies over and over again the buildup of spores is intense on those plants the spores Ophryocystis electroscara OE that's the bad thing for monarchs the spores build up on the leaves of the plant when an infected adult monarch butterfly lands on it the spores are on its abdomen and they sprinkle off like glitter onto the leaves then the caterpillar gets infected by eating the leaves that ingest the spores which then come to life within the uh, caterpillars their little protozoan cells they feed off the caterpillar and weaken they're not supposed to kill anything because they need the monarchs to survive but because there's so much of it down there and this all this tropical milkweeds is not dying back to the ground and regrowing fresh new leaves the population has a huge percentage of positive oe and it's like all right i have to change arms again hang on i didn't know i was gonna get a filming workout today <laughs> um Basically, what would have to happen would be to get rid of all the tropical milkweed and and not let the monarchs continue to survive to the extent that they are in South Florida. And I don't, I don't, I don't know what anyone thinks about that. I don't think that's going to happen. First of all. Um, so I don't know but I'm just throwing that out there as food for thought wasn't that great hey y'all I have more information about tropical milkweed in Florida which is not really helpful but it's enlightening I guess you would say they also did recommend not mass raising monarchs which I don't do I think I started out doing I was like counting and raising and releasing like a lot I bring them all in but now it's just a few and just enough that I know my garden can sustain. And I'm also, you know, raising and releasing a few of everybody. You know, I got the swallowtails and the sulfurs and the fritillaries and the zebra longwings. But I'm not like mass sending them out. Just one here, one there. Speaking of that, I got a giant swallowtail inside in the enclosure that is ready to fly free now that the thunderstorms are gone. I hope that tropical milkweed information made sense. I was just relaying what I just learned and I wanted to hurry up and film it real quick before I forgot. All right, you can see it fluttering around in there, the giant swallowtail. And I 
also have some Eastern Black Swallowtail Caterpillars to take care of because they have eaten two pots of um, bronze fennel. So they're going to move out into one of the big enclosures and and they're going to get <laughs> they're going to get on a big pot of um fennel and parsley so we got a couple things to take care of but first i'm gonna set this beauty free all right, so that beautiful butterfly is flying now in my garden. And now I'm going to get these guys set up <laughs> down in the outside enclosure so they don't have to share a stem. Okay, here we are in the outside enclosure. And this is where I have my sassafras tree in a pot and my potted wild lime. And all of the um, giant swallowtails that moved in on here before I went on vacation. You can see there's one there. I have pupated. All the chrysalides are still in here. I haven't moved any of them out. Look at this one down here. Look how beautiful. This one actually, I believe, is the spice bush swallowtail. There, I think there was one left in here. It was younger. So I've got this upside down pot, and I'm just going to set one of my potted collections of host plants for eastern black swallowtails on here, and then I'll move those guys out. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna bring the potted one in that's got them all on it, and I'm just literally gonna set the pot right in here, and then they can just naturally climb off onto the rest of the bronze fennel. Okay, here they go. Walking out to their new home. gonna scoot them around a little bit so that they're actually touching up against the other plants so make it easier for them to get on <laughs> here's Sarah I'm gonna go ahead and move him he looks like he is going to be finishing up eating very soon. There's a big purge coming. You gonna go on? There you go. Oh my, you guys, right next door. And this enclosure that had um, monarchs and my one queen. Look who's, look who's up at the top. My one queen. I didn't even see her chrysalis in here. So let's go set her free. I'll try and get in and let you see her up close first.
It's a male. It's beautiful. All right, mister, it's time for you to fly. Yep, you get to go see the big wide world. Okay, and here you can see the incredible difference in my sweet almond. You can see it's got a rounded top now. It doesn't have those pieces just sticking straight up in the air anymore. And as soon as those pieces decide, or I guess you would say conform, I hate that I'm making a plant conform, but you, you got it. I got to admit it. I am um, to its new shape. It'll stay that way. And then I'll be able to take the wires off. So it was kind of fun because when I got to bend the pieces and place them where there were areas um, of sparseness to make it look more full so I'll be curious to see how how it comes out and then how it continues to grow in the future everyone it's Friday morning and I didn't get to do much yesterday because it just rained and rained and rained which is so fabulous for my garden um, but I did get to finish the sweet almond as you've seen previously but another tree shrub shrubby shrub that I want to shape up is my um, wild lime I actually have two of them one's in a pot and then one is the big one by the enclosure. But I want to trim up the bottom. It's got a lot of growth coming out the bottom. So it'll come more up taller and more, um, I guess you would say tree shaped. I don't know. So I'm going to go work on that. The reason I want to do that, uh, especially the one that is by the enclosure, is because my dogs run around through there. And those low branches have all those thorns in them. And I, I don't want them to like get it in the eye or anything. Because... They don't, they don't pay attention, those two. When they're running and playing, they just like dive right through stuff. So that's why I'm doing that. Look y'all, there's a monarch mama over there laying eggs on my swamp milkweed. I'm kind of staying back because I don't want to spook her off. I want her to, you know, do what she's doing. And the butterflies have just started coming out like there's a zebra long wing a monarch butterfly um i just saw a long-tailed skipper not too long ago and um a horse's dusky wing so it's it's just super cool being out in the butterfly garden Okay, so here is the base of my wild lime. It's getting taller and taller. It's almost as high as the height of my butterfly haven. And you can see at the base the branches that are low that I'm just going to trim off. And I'm going to put them immediately in my... Oh, look. Look at what's here. Like and subscribe. While, while you're watching, just take a minute and tap that thumbs up button. And if you're not a subscriber, tap subscribe. That's all it does. It's just a tap. And then it'll, you know, let you know when I post videos if you turn on the little notification bell too. But I'm going to put my cuttings immediately in here because they are so thorny. I do not 
want to like make a pile of them and then have to move it. So I'm going to keep this trash can right by me. And y'all look who's right here while I'm trimming my wild lime, but a giant swallowtail. And y'all, I get to use my little Saker chainsaw to saw off. It's a really thin limb, but I don't want to go at it with the loppers when this is so much easier. So I'm going to use this to trim off just that little back limb that's going up to two sticky stubs. I think we're getting some eggs. Yes, we are. We are getting some eggs. You go, little girl. The next one I want to trim is just right here in this pot. And so I'm going to do the same. I'm going to take off the bottom pieces because I really want it to be like one trunk so it looks more tree-like. And then I'm gonna trim down the taller straggly ones to get more of a rounded full top on it. So we'll see how that goes. Now that um, it's all cleared out at the base, also all of my upland twin flower, which is a native, real pretty flower on it and my sunshine mimosas right here they can fill in all around here like they've been trying to do but they've been getting tangled up in the lower branches of the wild lime so i'm trying to look for a sunshine mimosa here's what a sunshine mimosa flower looks like and they're absolutely adorable it makes a fabulous ground cover and look how huge these are two mexican sunflower plants you can see the big base of one there and one over there and look at how huge they are and they are full of flowers. I do need to come in and deadhead a little bit, but they have been loving this rain. They're absolutely gorgeous. And when I'm not standing back here, there's usually a lot of butterflies around. There are some bees. Y'all, there's a spice swish swallowtail, um, polydomus swallowtail, a giant swallowtail that's got a big piece of it's a wing missing oh my look at it go though there's puppies it's amazing that that can fly